second stop of this poetic travelogue that I'm on, I carry on, connecting with the lexical flex that I'm an addict of, while attempting to map this long journey and urgent mission that I've happed upon. I've traveled on from that awesome embassy to the Northern Territory, to the city of Darwin, which used to be the name of this bay, named for one of history's most significant people, Charles Darwin, a former passenger on the Beagle, a ship that sailed past here, mapping and giving landmarks names that would last for years, causing the erasure of the nomenclature that was already clear to the many millennia residents of this land, the Larrakia. The British were far from the first visitors from across the waves. In fact, this area of the map was an established hub of international trade. Goods were exchanged with Indonesia, other local regions and such, and not just from that area. Even the Dutch came and mapped it without feeling the need to just clutch the land of these people and heedlessly crush the unique culture that resided within it. All was well, until the arrival of the British, who decided it was too high a price to resist it and even ignored the instruction of their own king that he had precisely given. You are to gain consent of the natives to take possession of convenient situations in the country in the name of the King of Great Britain. Or, if you find the country uninhabited, take possession for His Majesty by first setting up proper marks and inscriptions as first, first discoverers and possessors. Leaving aside for a second the impossibility of proving a negative, to those British explorers there was plentiful evidence of trade, land management and permanent residence. In other words, the many prior discoverers were already present. So already, by our own king's definition, what then followed was an illegal invasion. 200 years of occupation, eviction, brutalization with scurrilous intention, using a spurious invention, terra nullius, as justification. There's a lot of double think involved in this contention. If this was no one's land, who on earth were we killing, putting in missions and concentration camp prisons? And if they weren't human at all, but just collateral animal victims, how could they be converted to our Anglican religion? Who on earth created their 300 languages, their traditions, their elaborate spiritual traditions, their artistic visions, their cartographic map singing, their sustainable land management systems, their aerodynamic precision of their hunting weapons? But the most insidious, insidious, pardon me, the most insidious argument that gets in is related to the name of this very location. When you encounter someone pro-colonization and start discussing or verbally sparring with them, at some point, they're almost bound to bring out a belief in Darwinism. See, some people claim this process was natural selection, actually thinking that criminal acts are excused by the technology and weapons that the perpetrator has in possession. If that's legitimate, then any armed criminal is automatically forgiven. He had a Mac 11 and a Smith & Wesson, she did it. Natural selection. Never mind that terms like natural selection and survival of the fittest are oversimplifications of what Darwin had actually written. Using half-comprehended biological scientific impressions to remove emotion from and exculpate inhumane acts of political violent aggression is the mind state that serial killers are liable to get in. Richard Dawkins arguably the world's foremost evolutionary authority on the globe, says, re says repeatedly that co-opting the theory of evolution to mold and underpin moral po and political codes would be an utterly horrific notion. He's right, but we don't need to imagine it happening. We can see it in the dispassionate manner of this ongoing tragedy. A series of crimes has been committed, most with the motive of greed to we who benefited some with the misguided attempt to help the victims, many committed by people who were in turn traumatized victims. In the face of all this, it's natural to get defensive, but the first stage in preventing crimes in the present and potentially creating a uni unified, diverse collective benefiting from the ancient knowledge still existent is not to belittle the original crime or seek to forget it, but to take a good, honest peek at the historical record and at least, at the very least, admit it. Because if we don't, 
and we refuse to answer the call. Refuse to acknowledge the wisdom that manage this land, harbors and shores, and keep our heads in the sand as the charge of the storm becomes increasingly hard to ignore. We could end up as the first global recipients of the Darwin Award. Thanks guys. Poetic travelogue number two. As you can see, up in the Northern Territory next to Government House. Enjoying myself in Darwin, it's stunning. Balls hot, crazy, but beautiful. And I'm very happy to be here. About to start some serious driving. So if anyone wants to donate to the Diesel Fund, uh, check it out down below. And uh, to my patrons, thanks so much. This isn't a patron paid video, uh, but your patronage really helps me to do this kind of stuff. And there are Patreon videos in the bag waiting to be uploaded hopefully before the end of the month, at least one. Thanks guys, see you on the next travelogue, and uh, of course, most importantly, peace.